Welcome to uh, part two of the introduction to building scorecards in Excel 2010 using Power Pivots. Um, so what we're going to do in this um, in the second part of the uh, of the video is basically rebuild this uh, Power Pivot scorecard uh, and go over the actual the various steps uh, in achieving this or to achieve this. So the various steps are well, first of all we need to load the data into the Power Pivot. This will compress the data down to a uh, manageable size. We'll establish relationships between the multiple tables uh, within the data set. So we've got the master um, file, which has most of the spend data in it. Then we have the cost center um, and, um, table, which also has the, um, the type of employee um, uh, each staff member is. And then we've got a third table, which is basically a lookup um, which says what part of the world the, the employee was roaming in. So it's um, what we call the zone lookup table. We'll also um, go over what uh, how to create a, a DAX expression. So we'll use a DAX expression to determine whether a call is made inside or outside work hours. Um, but then we'll set up multiple um, slices linked to the data set so we can cut the data in a number of different ways. We'll link, uh, then link multiple pivot charts and tables to the single set of slices we've created. We'll then rank, on one of the um, pivot tables, we'll rank the records from um, the, uh, the employee with the largest spend on mobile, uh, on their mobile, down to the um, employee with the smallest spend. Then we'll also calculate some cumulative, um, cumulative totals and we'll use that in a Pareto type analysis. Okay, so first of all, we need to start up um, Excel 2010, and as you see here, it's loading in various add-ins that I have in, um, in uh, Excel here, and the uh, important add-in is obviously the Power Pivot add-in. Uh, if you haven't got that, you can go to, I think it's powerpivot.com, which is a Microsoft website, and download it. So we need to click on the uh, Power Pivot menu, click on the Power Pivot window, that will then um, uh, bring you through to this window. And then we've got options to get external data. So what we're going to do is pull data through from some, I think they're Excel files. So I'm going to say other data sources, go down to the bottom, Excel files, next. Then I browse to find these files. And I know that it's sitting, uh, I think it's uh, desktop scorecard demo and our raw data. Um, so it's in this file here. This is this 21 meg file. I'm going to open it up. I know that the first uh, row of data, I'm going to use those as headers. We can test the connection. Um, ver variably it comes back fine. Next, so I know that it's the data is sitting in sheet one. Just go finish, and it'll just take a couple of seconds now to pull those half a million rows of data into the um, the power pivot. Um, so you need to do this for each one of the separate tables. So first of all, this is really the master table that I'm that I'm bringing through. Obviously, it's quite a bit of data here, so it um, it does take a, a little while. Um, once this is done, we'll then pull through the cost center um, table and the zone lookup table. Okay, it looks like that's almost done. Okay, now it'll just start put running a counter through it. It'll um, um, and it'll count through to the um, through to the half a million or so um, rows that we uh, that we're bringing in. This is actually running a little bit slower than what it normally um, does, and I think that's probably because some of the uh, CPU is being um, used by the video screen recording um, software that I um, that I'm using. So here we go. Finally, started pulling the pulling the rows in. So this is much much quicker than it would be if you um, tried to import data into a uh, into a, say Excel for some reason. Again, I think it must be. It. So what it's done now is created what uh, um, the OLAP model in the back, which is the uh, the way in which the data is compressed. So once that 
it says that all the data has been brought through, so 483,000 rows. So I'm just going to close that. That all looks great. Okay, so I'm going to insert a DAX function here that'll check to see whether the time is after 7 o'clock at night. If it is, I'm going to call it a, um, a after hours call. If it's before it, it's going to be a work call um, based on this time column here. So what we see is that the actual formatting is incorrect on there. So we just need to go in and change the formatting in the menu there. So that's fine. So with these DAX expressions, I find it's since I'm not naturally good at writing these sort of functions, I find I'm better off actually using this um, using this uh, sort of the wizard that they that they have. So what I'm going to do is do a calculation using the hour function. I'm going to see whether um, this column here, whoops, um, see whether the time column. And what it does is it actually pulls up that column there and you can just click on the left hand side and it'll throw it in. Um, close the bracket then see whether it's um, after 19, so that 8 o'clock or later. Just check that. Okay so that looks good. So this is 8 o'clock uh, and it's after, so it's come back to true, if it's before 8 o'clock uh, it's coming back false. So what I want to do is actually make this uh, equation, this function, a little bit more complicated. I'm going to use an if statement. So I'm going to say if it's after um, 7 o'clock, I'm going to say, I'm going to call it after hours call. Um, if it's before I'm going to call it a uh, work uh, work hours hours call, and uh, then I'm going to close brackets, and then I'll see whether I've got it right. No, so what have I done wrong? So got the if statement there, the hour there, time greater than. 19. Uh, oh, that didn't. I didn't need a close bracket there. I think that's a bit more promising. And what I'm going to do is just rename that uh, that column. So right click over it, rename column. Uh, inside. Oops. Inside. outside work hours. So that's great. So I've now done the DAX expression. So I'll just save this as um, um, just call it the scorecard. Great. So that's saved fine. Okay, now what we're going to do next is create this total spend, um, and that's a just another very simple pivot table. So this is where we uh, were just now. So we're going to click back into the power pivot, um, and we're going to put one. Um, let's throw it um, about here. So that's F F11. So we're going to create another pivot table. Um, we're going to uh, in F11 and all it is is a total charge. Um, whoops. So we've created that in the wrong spot. So but all we can all we need to do is go copy. Let's drop that back in the right place. So what happens now is that this, um, if we alt uh, change these slices, we'll see that um, this pivot table that we created first changes, but this one doesn't. And the reason for that is that this 
pivot table is linked to the slices, but this one isn't properly linked. So what we need to do is link it. Um, so the step to do that is we go, um, just have to remember this now, um, just click on the pivot table, uh, pivot table, sorry, uh, power pivot, data mining, oh okay, click on options, insert slicer, slicer connections, and then you want to connect that pivot table to all of the slicers, click OK, now when we click um, on the, uh, on say the month, the sum of the charge will change as well. So what we need to do is just format that into a uh, into a dollars. What we'll do is we'll um, bring that across. So we highlight it, drag it across. Oh. Going to drag it across. To make sure we get a hold of it. Brilliant. To save that again and what we'll do now is create the um, the pivot charts 